Hey guys, uh, Mike here with Patriot Coin Rings. Uh, had a lot of fun making that um, that last Canadian coin ring from the uh, Big Penny uh, lot that they have. Um, the last one was a uh, 1919, and it just came out gorgeous. It was the uh, first one that I had done using only a uh, 5 8 inch hole, and it still came out really good. I was really worried about it tearing. Um, Let's see uh, what year this one is. Oh, we got a 1911. So, okay, so we're going to do a, do another one out of a 1911 today. And uh, let's get started. I'm not going to be talking nearly as much as the other video. Uh, the other video got kind of stretched out pretty far. Uh, so I'm just going to just kind of zip through this as quickly as I can. I'm just making a regular coin. And I'll just edit on the video up here leave you uh, some information if if I have any questions or I want to point something out um, okay see it's pretty dark uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, after I meal it I'm gonna soak it in some acid in an acid bath and that should clean it up really well too while we're at it so I'm just gonna stir up that acid a little bit I use Sparx too um, let me see where is my torch? There we go. Point. Get this nice and blistering red hot. And it is, this baby is glowing right now. Give it a nice dunk in that acid. Okay. I'm going to prep it for um, getting punched. You can see how clean it is now. It's from the acid dip. All right. So let me go ahead and get the guide, some tape. What I mean by guide, um, there's some really nice kits out there. And I like them. Uh, but if you're on a budget, not always the easiest thing to by all the equipment that you got. I've got a lot of equipment here and, and I still don't have everything. So basically I get a, <clears throat> a nylon washer from the specialty section of my hardware store. I line it up just right, fold it over, come back with it so that all corners, it basically doesn't let that washer slip around and then I'm going to be able to get a nice center punch out of it. Okay, after you do that with your tape, go ahead and fold it in so the sticky sticky part isn't bothering you anymore, leaving a nice tell. That'll help me when I'm, after I cut it, I can pull it out of my uh, punch kit. Okay, you want it right dead center. Alright, so I got it all there. Got my tape so I can pull it out after I'm done. Ready to go. Use my six ton press. Saving the copper, maybe I should, but I don't. I only save really save the silver. Got, got my punch. 
And then, like I said, the tape allows you just to pull, pull it right on through. You'll notice that, like, I mean, sometimes these things get really stuck in there. Um, that really helps out a lot to be able to pull it out. Um, but it's because the metal pushes down in between the metal here, and it locks in place. And as you can see, I've got additional spacers here. I put uh, some washer spacers just to be able to account for that extra nylon um, guide that I use. Okay, so looks like we're nice dead in center here. Let's go ahead and cut that off real fast. And you can see I punched in the direction of, because when you push, if I, I don't know if I get you get, get a side view, you see the burr and the cuttings that come out this way when I push through this way. This, this side's smooth, this side isn't. That's because I want this side to be my outside. That has all the uh, detail, the year of 1911 and all the uh, detail that I want on there. So that's what I use. Um, fantastic tool. You need to pick one up on Amazon if you don't already have one. Um, it's a deep burring tool, and I just crank that baby around there a couple times, and this is going to really get it nice and round for me, and it works good. It literally is spinning as I go around in here. Sometimes you don't need it so much on copper, but definitely without a doubt on silver. You are going to want that tool. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and kneel it one more time. Silver you would never get this hot, just so you know. Only in copper can you do this. Okay, that's all hot it is. Especially on clad coins, really just knock the crap out of them. I don't know, I saw a couple guys on YouTube and they were showing their junk piles of silver that they've destroyed because they were trying to get it that hot. And it's true, the hotter it is, I mean, the easier it is for the metal to move, but um, it's just not worth destroying a coin over. Okay, just so you know. I use uh, white lithium grease inside my punches, and uh, as well as on my uh, folding uh, dies. If you haven't uh, got it before, that's some white lithium grease by uh, Lucas. Uh, there's also a spray. You can use a spray. I, I, I've seen guys. You know, everyone has their own little preference. I, I like this better. And it's going to help that coin fold a lot easier without marring up the sides of it. I'm going to make sure it's nice and straight. All right, now that I got that, let's get some Delrin balls. I do use these. Again, I'm all about keeping detail. So, I'm going to go ahead and use the Delrin balls instead of, instead of the metal. And I do have lots of the steel around here, but you can learn these do have their downside. I cracked a couple. As soon as you start feeling pressure, back off on it. See that this barely fits in here. That's good because it's just below the surface. I'm going to go ahead and do it again. The softening of the copper is still fine. Okay. And because we're using a 5 8 cut, it's still not going to be big enough to get on top of here. So I learned a little trick. 
trying to play around different things, how to how to try to get around that. And what I did was I got a washer and sim simply put that in one of the smallest holes that you could, I mean, that you wouldn't think of using for the, for the comb. Um, and I actually set it inside there like this. By doing that, I can set my, my uh, coin on there where the hole is far too small for here. And it's actually way, way up on top. I don't know if you guys can see this. And I haven't seen anyone else doing this online. The uh, the nylon, don't worry about it though. The ni nylon is actually going to completely protect that. It's going to fold with the, with the coin and it's going to open up that hole big enough so that we could get an actual 5 eighths on there. And that's what we want. Just, you know what though? I'll tell you what, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to anneal it one more time because I don't want that splitting on me because it is such a Let's get a lot more hot than you would do your silver. Always dry it off. Getting that water and acid on my tools causes a lot of rust pretty fast. So I'm not only doing that, but I'm also greasing down with the uh, white lithium on all my stuff on a regular basis just to make sure that they're okay. I already lost a lot of tools to rust before I found out that um, mixing uh, five parts water to one part um, uh, oh, what's that um, uh, pool acid uh, oh my goodness you guys will know I'm just getting sidetracked here that's all um, the pool acid anyway muriatic acid muriatic acid will really take the rust right off. Okay. I'm gonna, I gotta get a close shot for you on this one. Yeah. Hopefully you can see how that is with the nylon and the copper and so it's completely sort of surrounded by copper. I'm able to actually push that down there further. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay, I'm going to move it over to the next one now. And that doesn't look like nothing's happening, but you'll see. You will see. Kind of hard doing this one-handed. Keeping it straight, I could I could see where it kind of like is off, tiny. There you go. Okay, got that, guys. And you'll see it pop back up because that's the nylon in there. And now our coin should fit. The ball that I'm using is a little too wide. I need a smaller one. If I put a smaller one in there, it'll actually go all the way through. Pushing that opening up for me. And that's what we want. this a little too much because I can see it getting a little bit on the wobbly side so let me fix this here
You can see sometimes the ball will actually get stuck in there. The white lithium should help it come out. If not, go ahead and use this. Turn it upside down. Just give it a little smack. There we go. No problem, no harm, no foul. That, my friends, will work. All right, so nice little tip. You go to the hardware store, get some nylon washers, uh, multiple sizes, because you're gonna be able to use them. And I'm gonna have to work this a little bit because I did tweak it a little bit to the side. I don't know if you can see it, it's just off just a hair. But I tend to be kind of like a perfectionist on this stuff, so. Maybe more than most people would care. I don't know. I mean, most most guys that are into this hobby really put it all they got into it. And I'll tell you what, myself, as well as I, I, I'm speaking for others, I guess. We don't make much on this. This is totally a hobby. Completely, I I would never do this for a living. Um. I have a full-time job, I just, and I'm retired from law enforcement, I just, all I'm, I just do this just for fun, I, it's night time right now, uh, I just had dinner, I met, earlier I made a video because somebody in a, in a chat forum uh, that I know want, wanted a uh, video of me doing one of these Canadian coins, so I did, and that process, being very, very detailed, took about four hours, if you could believe that. Only because I wanted to show extreme detail and explain every step, step by step. So, you'll be able to find that on YouTube. It's probably just to your, um, what, to my right, to your left? No, to your right, my left. So, um, on the side, you should be able to see other videos of mine. And it'll uh, be published in a uh, two-part series. All right, so let's go ahead and get some Teflon on there now. Once again, protecting the inner detail. And definitely buy the Teflon, buy the box. You're going to go through this stuff a lot if you're doing it right and if you care. To have nice quality rings with really nice detail and I'm probably gonna bring this I don't know the last one I made was a, a size ten and a half it was a 1919 um, I don't know maybe I'll make a size 12 and that's surprising because it's so small small and this hole is so small so, little quarter inch turns, guys, and work it down. Work it while it's soft, and if you see it hardening up on you, stop and anneal. You can't anneal enough. Teflon pulling down. Sometimes you gotta lift it back up and go over the top of it like that. Okay, I've just about got a perfect ring right there. Yeah, because it's tightening up, I am gonna nail again. I'm also going to go ahead and sand um, have a piece of 150 grit that you can just go ahead and run 
because at this point when it's this straight and it's almost a ring, uh, it's too hard to use the deburring tool without scarring up and marring the uh, size of the, of the coin. And some of you might ask why I, why I used a 5 eighths, or rather, excuse me, 5 sixteenths, a punch. And that's because that's not very usual. Um, it's because on these Canadian coins, the date is so far towards the middle um, that if you were to use your typical 7 sixteenths, which is usually like the smallest, um, you're going to completely cut it off. So if you want your clients to see that date, take the extra time and go 5 eighths. Check it. Any signs? Cracks are good. And typically, better to go smaller than. I mean, because this is this is a big one for a customer, but. Um, I usually start off small and then I'll make it, I'll put it up for sale, show what it looks like and if a customer needs it resized it's always better to go bigger, starting off from small to bigger than to try to have to shrink it up afterwards which really sucks. And I have got a nearly perfect ring right now as it is. I mean, that is, for you guys that make uh, rings, you probably know how much you fight with the wobbles and stuff. And, uh, but having the right tools means everything, guys. I can see the 1911 on there real nice. I'm happy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this torch up. and move on to I think this one I'm gonna leave I'm not gonna patina it because it, they do look very nice uh, patina they also look very nice polished but if a customer wants a patina it it's easier to do that than to have to remove the patina and and repolish it not a big deal to do um, you guys want anything from me, just let me know. You see, you see one of my rings, and it says size ten and a half, whatever. Um, go, go ahead and, and just let me know uh, what what your ring size is. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this adjusted here. Let me know what your uh, ring size is. Um, I could go ahead and adjust this ring size for you if you see it's patinaed and you want it polished. You want a mirror polish, or you want a stainless steel polish. Um, that's cool too. I also have a, a very expensive, very nice electric plating machine. Um, you may want something really cool like this uh, uh, that's been thickly uh, gold plated. I don't have a I don't have one of those um, rub on gold plating kits. Uh, the ones that I have actually are dunked in and they soak over a period of time and they get a very thick uh, gold plating. Um, I also do platinum and I do silver. The reason I do silver is I actually do will, I will do silver on top of silver. Um, because when I'm working with anything that's post-1965, you guys know that it's for only 40% silver, right? Um, the the pre-1964s uh, are fine. Uh, they're 90% silver. Anything post is going to have a, a small ring of copper. It's very small, but it's still there um, of copper. And so uh, just to keep that a copper ring uh, from showing, some people have acetic hands and it'll show a green mar or a green uh, ring around your finger if you have acid hands acidic hands um, it'll turn green on you um, by plating it 
you're just putting a little more silver on it. It's not making it any less valuable. It keeps all the detail, and uh, but it coats that section so that it doesn't happen. Another way to do that real quick is nail polish. Uh, just like if, if you wanted one of these Canadian coins or any other coppers, you could you could use that, and that will um, uh, that will stop any green process on your finger. Okay, so let's fastly, fastly, quickly move on. Um, white, white stick. I'm going to go ahead and use this. Actually, uh, no, no, you know what? Okay, I will at first, and then I'm going to move over to my copper green because we're not going to be putting any patina on it. So let's go ahead and do that. This is just some uh, Wright's Copper Cream. Microfiber uh, cloth, wipe that down, see how it looks. <laughs> 